Okay, I, uh, let's start it. So, uh, thanks for coming. And I know it's a Friday, uh, it's a Thursday, but tomorrow is a Friday. And uh, we, it's our first time to be in this city, I think, for most of the people. And uh, maybe we are looking for some fun tomorrow or the weekend. So thank, thank you for staying with us and uh, to see this presentation. Okay, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm uh, Haiming Yang from uh, IBM China, uh, China System Technology Lab. It's a CSTL in STG System Technology Group. So we are um, basically we're making hardware. And uh, IB, uh, OpenStack is kind of IBM new infrastructure uh, to unify all the resource, uh, including the x86 uh, power mainframe and uh, all kinds of storage. We want unify the storage as a, as a bundle offer to the customer. So here's so my topic is a hybrid cloud with OpenStack and uh, bridging two worlds together. Um, since the first day I'm in the design summit, I saw a lot of people talking about the concept uh, of hybrid. Uh, it's kind of uh, confused me because uh, everybody talking, everybody has its own understanding. And uh, I saw some presentations say hybrid is uh, a VMware virtualization, so hybrid with KVM virtualizations, so managed by the same OpenStack. Uh, another people told me hybrid is uh, I have a bunch of uh, bare metal machines and I want to manage it together with, uh, with the virtualization environment. And uh, also someone told me it's, uh, I have a data data center in Atlanta, another data center in New York, how can I manage them together? And that is another kind of hybrid. And uh, even further, I have an Amazon service and I have a soft layer service, I have OpenStack service, how can I make them work together? This is a, it's a final hybrid. So it's pretty much, uh, in infrastructure level, we can have a many different solutions, but uh, our goal is we want application, our application and the users to look at all the different infrastructure in the same way. So this is why we are here, and we want to bridge those different infrastructure together and work as a single, uh, single end user experience. Okay, so first, uh, I explain a little bit of the hybrid meaning in, the, in our world. And uh, then uh, this presentation, I will be in three, three sections. First, uh, let's explain what is, uh, what is our imp implementation and what is our goal. And the second is, uh, what is the major use case we want to solve in, in the hybrid world? And the third part is current effort on the hybrid area, which uh, I remember this morning, our colleagues in the communities is proposed some federation concept and also multi-region concept. So it's really the start point of hybrid. And we want the hybrid can go further and then we see the real unified of, of, the, of the cloud. So, um, so what is the hybrid? And I think most of people kind of like agree with hybrid is a, a public cloud and connect the public cloud with a private cloud. So what is public cloud or what is the target for the public cloud? It's a pay as you go and auto scale. So it's more like a flexibility. And for the private cloud, it's uh, for enhanced security performance, reliability and uh, they want a full control of your resource. So that is the target of the private cloud. And uh, mapping to the old war, uh, old period, it's a private cloud, most likely enterprise cloud. And public cloud is uh, like MSP, managed service provider, or now we call it a CSP what is called cloud service provider. So, and uh, in, the uh, in the cloud model, uh, my background is network, so network has a seven layered model. So I think in the cloud area, we can also separate in this layered model. So bottom layer is a physical machine. Uh, so you're using x86, you're using power, or what kind of storage, you're using EMC or NetApp, or what kind of switch, Cisco Brocade. So this is a physical layer. And the second layer is the virtualization layer. So what kind of hypervisor are you using, like a KVM, is, is dominant in the OpenStack world. And VMware is a, is a big player in enterprise layers. And also for the storage virtualization, we have uh, so many distributed file system, like a GlassFS or Ceph, something. A network, uh, I know that there's a, our neighbor there is talking about a lot of uh, 
SDN concept and a lot of interesting implementations. So that is a virtualized uh, your resource with uh, computing resource, storage resource, and network resource. Then it's come to the OpenStack. Usually we call it IAS as a service, and above uh, OpenStack, it's uh, like a Cloud Foundry. Those are or OpenShift. Uh, those are those open source projects. Uh, we can categorize uh, category it into the, like a platform as a service. Uh, above the platform as a service, there will be the software as a service. So, if we are placing the public cloud and the private cloud into this, uh, this layered model, we will see the private cloud fo most focusing on the, on, the, on the underneath, like a physical layer and a virtualization layer and a resource manager, which is a IAS layer. And for the public cloud, it's a mo most likely a general purpose cloud. They want something quick, and uh, reliability may not be the first priority to implement. And they want to do some quick POC, or since most enterpri most small enterprise may not last like a, like IBM a hundred a uh, hundred years, so probably just a, f a few years. So they want to quickly test their idea, and they don't want to spend so much money on their infrastructure. So that's probably the major benefit of public and the private cloud. P public will be more flexible, and the private will will be more reliable. So how can we get a, a single offer to combine this uh, benefit both from public and the private? So then this is why we need a hybrid. So the first uh, bridge cloud uh, with tour is uh, how we do it is the region. We know OpenStack has a concept of region. And for one OpenStack deployment, uh, we have a single keystone. And uh, we have uh, two data center, one maybe in Atlanta with uh, NOAA, with uh, Neutron, with uh, Cinder. And the other is uh, my data center in New York. It uh, has its own NOAA, has its own uh, Cinder and Neutron, so those are infrastructure. And uh, the authentication through the same Kisno share the same authentication service. And uh, because those are two data centers managed by the same organization or corporation. So they will have the same administration user interface for the administrator. The, um, so what the purpose of this kind of a region or multi-region deployment is uh, targeting for the resource consolidation in the same data center. I remember in the last uh, 10 years, uh, there's uh, uh, a lot of company buying a lot of hardware. Now they feel they have too much hardware. They want to combine the resource in the, in, in the same management. And uh, they want to use their hardware more efficiently because they find that most of their CPU or memory resource is wasted and not fully used. So they want to use virtualization and fully utilize the virtualization benefit to manage them together. So if by this region concept, uh, we can manage multiple virtualization hypervisors and uh, bare metals in the same in the same administration. So, uh, current OpenStack uh, did pretty well. I would say did pretty well on this part. We have uh, Ironic to manage uh, the bare metal. We have a uh, community has a VMware driver, has a Hyper-V driver, and the KVM driver, and IBM also have its PowerVC driver. Power, manage power VM. So uh, this part, I think, that's a pretty good. And the next, this is, I think, if you guys in this room in the whole day, you will know there's a Keystone Implement Federation concept. Each, uh, before the OpenStack comes out, uh, there's, uh, there's still a lot, uh, there's a lot of federation already in this class, and uh, I think they're called single sign-on something. And uh, they use the service outside your cloud is authentication through outside authentication method, and uh, all your cloud will be authentication authenticated through that service. So this is uh, using federation. You can so each so you have a, you pretty much have a two OpenStack cloud and. Uh, you build an OpenStack cloud first and in one data center, and then you build another one. Now you want to combine them together. So they probably doesn't have the same keystone or glass or whatever, the same service. But you want to combine these uh, two independent OpenStack cloud managed by the same organization. So you want to federate your keystone. And so this one, we have seen some users uh, 
trying to adopt this concept by like a, they have a primary data center in one place, and uh, they have another one which major is a backup or the disaster recovery data center. So they want to. They're still in the same organizations, but they want to le fully leverage uh, the capability of their their distributed. Uh, distributed topology. So somehow they also call it like a distributed cloud. And uh, that is in the same organizations. It also happens uh, in the private and the public OpenStack cloud. I, if you go to, I'm not going to do commercial for Rackspace, but uh, Rackspace did some prototyping or the implementations with uh, two OpenStack, since Rackspace is based on OpenStack, and uh, you can federate your private OpenStack uh, environment with Rackspace uh, public Rex, uh, OpenStack service. This is the second kind of uh, bridge the cloud. The third one is, I would say, it's more general purpose uh, hybrid. It's uh, uh, since uh, I personally don't believe OpenStack is the will be the one to unify all the cloud. So outside there will still Amazon cloud, uh, Google cloud, and uh, in China there's uh, Alibaba cloud. So they will have a lot of a variety, or even sometimes uh, we don't call that thing is a cloud. It's uh, just legacy stuff. Like uh, in some of our customer environment, uh, they did uh, some. Uh, a pretty good implementation to manage their infrastructure, but they, they don't call it cloud. But their API is, uh, or their operations is very unique. How can OpenStack Cloud work with uh, those uh, legacy or the third-party cloud? So this is a target we want to achieve. So um, I remember in the first or the second release, uh, Nova API has an EC2, I think has an EC2 API. And uh, I just checked the code. It's still there. Uh, but I don't know. Is there an enhance or, what's, or just the old legacy stuff? And uh, yeah, that will be interesting. So that's the original thought of uh, Noah, how to collaborate with, uh, with Amazon Cloud. It's uh, just in the API level, it's compatible. Uh, so this target will be for the OpenStack hybrid with uh, other OpenStack, uh, non-OpenStack Cloud. So, um, so if the customer or you have bought uh, some resource from different cloud, then you can manage or unify them in your single wheel. It doesn't matter is uh, your own environment or some resource outside your organizations. Um, that will be more flexible. For example, um, you want to extend. You have some contractor in your company, and you don't want to the contractor use your own resource since uh, either you don't reserve the resource for those uh, newcomers or they, they don't follow, the, they don't apply the security enforcement. So you want to build another cloud outside your private cloud, but they still need to work together. So that's, uh, you can have the more flexibility to choose uh, what cloud resource vendor you're going to use. And uh, there will be a lot of, uh, uh, I think, a sales game you can play with, uh, with the resource pricing. So this is a major three cloud, or we say bridge the cloud. OK, now this is applications that we targeted to solve by this hybrid model. The first one is uh, um, meet the temporary capacity that cannot be met by the private cloud. So um, we have seen some interesting observation from the customer. So like uh, in the Black Friday, it's, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a cloud, uh, there's a traffic burst compared to the daily average uh, traffic. So it may be 10 times this is what we saw from one customer. So, but the customer won't buy resources with 10 times. So they just want to, in one day or two days, they want to get some more resource from your public offering to achieve, uh, to, uh, uh, to respond to the customer requirement. So this is a cloud burst. The other, the other one is, um, so temporarily, the organization wants some extra resource. As I mentioned in the last chart, is they have a newcomers. They want a, a, a new project. They want test data. It, it's, a, it's a good project or not a good project. So they probably just want some resource for three months to POC their ideas. So they can use this model to, uh, um, achieve their their PLC goal by the hybrid uh, using hybrid resource. 
So you will see here the private cloud has um, applications and uh, public cloud. So it will, in the cloud burst situation, it will automatically scale to the public cloud with uh, some allowed application, which uh, can meet uh, your security requirement. So this is the first use case. Um, the second use case um, is the disaster recover or the backup situations. So um, I know that disaster won't happen every day, but uh, you need to prepare something for the, for the disaster. And uh, then the customer will buy some extra resource uh, from the public or it's uh, reserve some of the public resource in the public cloud and prepare for the worst time. And uh, then periodically, there's a few steps. First, they probably replicate your metadata or your configurations from your private to the public, like uh, your user authentications and, uh, yeah, and the flavors and the security policy, those things. And also the content. The content probably the difficult part, especially with uh, um, with two cloud, completely, completely different architecture. It's a little bit more easier by just if the two cloud are both the OpenStack cloud. So the content include uh, um, the volume, which uh, saved your data, and the virtual machines, which are running your application, and the images, which is your template uh, to deploy the VM. So we at least we need, uh, and also the r relationship between the between the VM and the volume is because sometimes your VM is actually attached with, uh, with your volume. So, so those are the three basic content that we need to replicate the, from the primary to your hybrid the public cloud. And uh, then after the disaster, have, uh, you, you also need to periodically or play or replay what you did on the private cloud, then make sure the public cloud can catch up your latest change in your private major cloud. And then after the disaster or your, your, your private cloud has been recovered, you need to replicate back from the public to the private. And uh, so that's what is, I would say is, uh, is cheaper than you buy a bunch of hardware to build a disaster data center. So since you, uh, you bought some service, disaster recovery service from the public cloud, so that resource probably not a dedicated to you. It's uh, just some of a resource in the, the public cloud offering, uh, public cloud uh, vendors uh, will uh, keep in mind and reserve for you. So this is the second use case for the disaster recovery or backup. So the third one is uh, there's uh, still some debate of is that a, a real hybrid case. So I would say it's a more general purpose uh, case. So um, because when the cloud comes out, each wonders need to survive. So they build their cloud with some specific usage. For example, I remember in China market, there's some cloud vendors focus on the content deliver, content deliver cloud. So their cloud infrastructure probably best for the, uh, for the video or the audio, de uh, audio deliver. And some of the cloud may like more like a general purpose. It's uh, just provide a VM, provide a bunch of uh, storage, so, and uh, hosting a, a small IT. So if I want an application which uh, combine the resource and, uh, or take the benefit of all those cloud, how can we co work, combine them together? So this is an example of uh, uh, one cloud is a computing cloud, the other is a storage cloud. So your data or your user information, you don't want to give it to the you, you don't want to give it outside. I remember, I think uh, Target has uh, some problem with uh, leaking the customer use information. And, um, but usually the public cloud has a more computing capability since uh, the hardware usually two year, two year and a half, we need to change it to a new generation. So they usually can get a more late, latest, the greatest the hardware. So they, we probably need to fully utilize the capability, computing capability from the public cloud, but you don't want to make your private information um, exposed in the public cloud. And uh, I remember a long time ago, we were discussing what is the next generation of, uh, of cloud or cloud computing. So we were talking about like a fog computing. So after cloud computing, it will be fog computing. But I think it's a joke. So, but I think this federation model is pretty good. So we have a, a general, a big island in the, in the 
in, as a public service, and uh, we keep something for ourselves, which is uh, our own technology or some content based. So how we hybrid, hybrid this kind of a uh, private and the public, so uh, content and. Uh, so this is the the third model we are trying to achieve. So okay, so we we need to implement this uh, what we said in the in the previous uh, chart. And uh, the first implementation, so what we can do is uh, so we want to make our life easier. I know there's a uh, the cloud outside uh, outside OpenStack is complicated. Like uh, I remember Amazon may have a uh, 2,000 APIs, but. Uh, uh, but OpenStack probably only have a four, five, 500 and 600 APIs, so I believe there definitely be some gap between the, uh, between the OpenStack API and the Amazon AWS APIs. So um, the easier way is uh, we create an OpenStack cloud in that public cloud. So that's a, that's an easy answer. Then we can. Um, just like a two open stack cloud that work together. So you, that hybrid will be fall back to like a federation model. And uh, in this part, we probably need to solve the problem like uh, how can we pass all the images, the template from your private to public since uh, you want your public open stack cloud using the same way as your private cloud. And the configuration probably easier, like uh, you whatever make a, a package and a zip file and uh, upload it to your public and uh, deploy it or with some script to reconfigure your public open public provision open stack cloud but for the data if you like image or volume you may take some effort first the network bandwidth is limited you cannot pass all the information in a timely fashion and second I'm not sure the security can allow you to do this kind of uh, collaboration between your private and public. So there's, a, uh, there's still some work needs to do. Ideally, um, you shouldn't feel the difference between your private and public, since uh, both your private and uh, it, since your private and the your public OpenStack, which hosted on the third-party non-OpenStack cloud, they should be looked at the same or two regions in your Keystone point of view. So, and they can use the as the, as the same set of uh, same horizon can operate. Uh, so there will be the major fourth step to implement uh, this kind of uh, uh, OpenStack on your public uh, cloud offering. It's uh, first uh, bare metal. You need, a b of course, you need to get a bunch of hardware, and uh, then deploy your OpenStack with a specific topology. And uh, I think probably you need a, a, a fill a form with how many compute, how many, how many, how many storage, and. Uh, those informations you want to fill out. And you also want to say, okay, who I want to federate and what kind of user authentication I want to use. And then after deploy the cloud, you need to configure the cloud. So fill up all the policy specific information. Then the so number four is, I think, I personally think it's, uh, it's very important since when you deploy the cloud, how can you say the cloud, you can use the cloud? So, of course, we have time pass, but uh, to me, it's uh, like a function verification test. So in our production uh, development engineering team, so function test, a unity test is our first step. And uh, second step is a function verification test. And then we also need integration test and system test. So I think uh, if compared to the production environment, uh, this step will be like a, a SVT, system verification test. And I need to test all the basic functions it's working. And I also need to test uh, is my scalability satisfy, the, satisfy my requirement or the longitude test. So my VM running 100, hour, 100 hours does it does work this way. So, uh, so this kind of test I think is uh, missing right now in the time pass. I know there's a... Uh, uh, there's a current a project uh, going the ref stack maybe um, this is trying to address this problem by uh, enforce those kind of a standard so if you say your cloud your open stack cloud is ready to go to customer you at least you need to pass you need to have a, a third party or um, you need to pass kind of a standard to show you can do it so this is the goal um, yeah, I mentioned. So there's another project, Triple O. I think it's targeting for the same thing. It's uh, you run your OpenStack on top of OpenStack. 
Uh, so this chart is an uh, implementation of IBM. IBM OpenStack running on soft layer. So another hybrid implementation we are discussing here is a kind of a hybrid framework. It's um, so here. Let me see. I hope this is the button. Okay, here. So he, I still using Horizon since from the application Horizon. I can think I can consider it as a application. It's GUI application with a with a basic implementation of the combination of OpenStack API. And uh, so I don't expect any change or a big change in the Horizon, Horizon operation. And, uh, but I expect there is some cloud, cross-cloud scheduler with some consideration. For example, I think some cloud quality is better than some cloud. And, or some cloud price is cheaper than some cloud. So I need, I need this kind of, uh, just a too simple, a simple example, but I do believe there's a more criteria. So this part, I need a, a cross cloud scheduler to decide uh, which cloud or which my pl what provision VM or provision resource, which cloud I should place the resource or send a request to. So this is a cross cloud scheduler. And uh, this is a hybrid engine framework. This is what we think about. Oh, by the way, so, so here is just one kind of uh, implementation in our mind. And uh, it's not a right or right answer. And uh, I think there should be some better implementation than this one outside, outside somewhere. Um, so this will be a hybrid engine, since they, they will expose the OpenStack API, which is the same as the uh, open, standard OpenStack API. And, uh, under the hybrid engine, we can pass through all the OpenStack API requests to the real OpenStack cloud, which we can describe it as on-premise private cloud. So this is uh, here. And uh, the other one is uh, we develop some kind of uh, adapter or plugin. So I list here, but that, it doesn't mean it should be in the same uh, same package. It could be a public service. For example, it's JumpGate. This is IBM developed the uh, soft layer plugin. It's uh, it can be bundled. It's uh, it's already in the GitHub. So I can talk to the JumpGate. It's bundled inside my package and uh, talk to the soft layer API. Or I can develop uh, like Amazon AWS API and uh, talk to the. Amazon cloud or whatever. If the Ali cloud, the China China dominant cloud, want to work with a private uh, open set cloud, they need to develop uh, another cloud uh, adapter or the engine to talk to the open set cloud. So this is uh, uh, so those will be the off premise dedicated private cloud. So this kind of a uh, framework and a plugin model is I think probably is uh, is one way to implement this uh, how to hybrid. Uh, uh, OpenStack cloud with a non OpenStack cloud. So, a little a simple explanation of the jump gate. So, you can get the jump gate code in this, uh, in the GitHub. And uh, I won't say the code is uh, fully. Uh, fully function. So we tested with, uh, it's, it's working, I would say it's working, but it's not work as a production requirement. Uh, so there will be the two major part of the JumpGate project. Uh, so this part, soft layer API is not a part of a JumpGate offering. And uh, it's, uh, right now we have identity service, computing image and the block storage service. So it can, but it doesn't say all the API has been compatible or it's working now. So you can use your OpenStack or Horizon, call this identity service or a computing or NOAA Keystone service. You will get the serv you will get the, your machine provisioned through the soft layer Python library and uh, talk to the software API. Then you will get uh, your, your, your call has been executed in the OpenStack way. So basically, the jump gate is a translation layers to convert incoming OpenStack calls to different cloud prov providers API calls. So in, it will be interesting to see if uh, we think it's a, a framework. So we will expose those identity compute or images of block storage APIs as an exposed 
to the to the OpenStack side. And uh, we need to focus on those uh, soft layer Python libraries will be the one to do the translation from the from this OpenStack API to the other non-OpenStack APIs. So we will focus then developing. So what is the soft layer Python library we can do or whatever other cloud API you want to develop. And then if it's, uh, it's fully compatible or this data soft layer API um, has the functions uh, which are similar to the OpenStack API, then we can use that talk together, combine them together. So this is the last chart. So we probably need some help. Is uh, what is the challenge of hybrid implementation? So first, of what we have been done. So in this morning, we have a lot of discussion on federation. So that is a pretty good implementation. I think the framework is uh, pretty nice, and uh, we just need to federate more identity identity service. I I'm not a, I'm not expert on all those identity service. So. And uh, multi-region is there, with it's so we can fully deploy multi-region OpenStack with the uh, same horizon or same GUI. But what we haven't done yet, so so think about the workload part. So first one, the heat across multi-region is not fully implemented. And uh, I remember there's a blueprint in Icehouse talking about this implementation in the cross multi-region implementation. But the code has been. Um, Reverted. I I don't know why because it seems to keep abundant and recovered. I I, I really don't know why. And uh, the volume replication across hybrid cloud. So we can first make life easier. So we have a two OpenStack cloud. How can we replicate uh, my volume from OpenStack cloud one to OpenStack cloud two? And uh, so. For the network, for the network part, so my goal is uh, the bigger layer to switch, which uh, with isolation and the security. So I cr in, I create a VLAN or VXLAN in my OpenStack Cloud one, and uh, I have another VXLAN in the OpenStack Cloud two. So they are actually in the same same VLAN or VXLAN. So so logically, they are in the same broadcast area, but uh, physically, they're completely separate. So this is uh, the target. And uh, I remember a long time ago in the, in the telco business, uh, so in Lucent, they developed the IP over IP protocol since uh, they want uh, my cell phone. They want a cell phone to can be online by using, I think it's a 3GPP something or 3GPP2. And uh, their protocol is a pretty much a telco business protocol, which is a completely private protocol. I, I can't remember the name. But above their protocol, they developed um, IP packaging, which is a packaging with IP. So they keep the application level the same as, um, as the Wi-Fi style. So the so, so bigger layer to switch, I think, probably the best way to to achieve this kind of hybrid network model and the bare metal provisioning. So this part, um, I don't think there's a, a single answer at this moment. So there's a lot of tooling to do the bare metal provisioning. But uh, it's, so I think the war, OpenStack was still thinking the, the, the physical layer and the virtualization layer. But to me, they are, they are all resource, the physical, physical layer and the virtualization. They should be together, not in the, in the layered model. So they're just bare metal. And uh, for the glance part, since like uh, my cloud, OpenStack Cloud 1, probably based on KVM, and OpenStack Cloud 2, based on the VMware. So they are different uh, format. How can I deploy my image in two different, uh, uh, two different kinds of hypervisors. So this is a challenge. And, uh, mm, and uh, I, my image available, even the same hypervisor, my KVI image available in OpenStack 1. But uh, how can we in timely fashion pass those uh, images from OpenStack 1 to the OpenStack 2? This uh, is also another challenge. And uh, there's also interesting con uh, discussion for uh, the object storage. So if I have a Swift cluster across the private cloud and the public cloud, then I will have a single 
a single Swift, Swift endpoint. So the customer, when the customer accessing the Swift service, it's already achieved the hybrid automatically. So I think that would be the super cool if we can achieve that goal. So these are, I, I believe there should be more open issues in the, in the hybrid concept, but uh, those are uh, problems that we find in our implementation. So uh, especially there's another challenge, like uh, if uh, the user authentications in private cloud and the public are completely different. So how can I operate uh, the public cloud with the users in the private cloud? I don't think this part has been addressed uh, completely at this moment. OK. Yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the topic we are talking about today. So any question? No question? Hi. Hi. I'm, um, I'm Jerry, you're working with Nokia. I have a question in terms of the hybrid cloud, especially when um, with OpenStack, with third party um, public cloud, let's say AWS, et cetera. So to, um, the mentioning of federation, et cetera, mostly is for identity and, uh, and uh, authorization uh, assignments, which is to some extent easier because the bigger problem for application or workloads to shift from one cloud to another, much of the features, capabilities, um, and mismatch, API, et cetera, that's the soft, thin layer you can always encapsulate and translate. But the features, just like um, for Certain clouds don't have um, database services, don't have um, EOB, don't have um, queuing services, etc. How how do you or IBM envision that would be um, handled? Thanks. Yes. So, um, <laughs> good question. So, so you're basically asking how application can auto scale from your private to the public. So, content, how your content can be moved from private to the public. So, I I won't say there will be a simple solution to do that. I would. I would say there's a, a bundled solution offering in the storage, in the computing, in network offering. You can achieve this. So think about this. Your network connection from your private to a public is one megabyte. See, I don't think we can play anything fancy with this one megabyte uh, bandwidth. We definitely need some special, uh, special line from your private to public to achieve this uh, trans fast transfer. And uh, so, yeah, basically my answer is this, this need a, a bundle solution in the different layers to achieve this goal. I guess it's not only the application content, it's mm -hmm. also the application architecture of using certain services to, to let's say, queuing services mm -hmm. um, to decouple. And if the queuing, um, works differently mm -hmm. or is even missing in certain cloud, then you will almost re it require you to re-architecture re app in order to dis distribute your workload for DR purposes especially. So for application levels, I remember a long time ago, there's some limitations. Uh, so you have a, a single entry of routers, and uh, the router will route is a real IP, and uh, will matching a few virtual IPs. Then this router will route your request according to the load workload to your either private or pri or public cloud. So this uh, may be. Yeah, I know in the application level we did uh, to fitting this new structure. Enterprise application usually doesn't think about uh, this kind of uh, new structures, this distributed structures. So it's just like a, a single application or multiple thread running on a, simple ser on a single server. But for the real internet application, so each server should be running one thread, one application, or even one component. I don't want it running everything. So this is my understanding of how we can solve this in application level. Thanks. OK, I think I'm running out of time. <laughs> so thank you for coming. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions.